We cannot accept a deal that punishes the UK. Any good negotiator knows you can't go into a negotiation saying that you're accepting any deal at all. We're also clear that to respect the referendum outcome, we cannot end up being half in and half out of the EU. We hear a tremendous amount about objections to a hard Brexit, but the people who say that so seldom say what they actually mean or define by what they mean by hard Brexit. I can think of three or four meanings of the term hard Brexit. Then another phrase that has aroused ire has been the Prime Minister's statement that no deal would, could be better than a bad deal. But by saying that, the Prime Minister never meant that she was aiming at no deal, that that was her goal. But it is, as the noble Lord and learned Lord Brown said, obvious, common sense, that it would be ludicrous to say any deal is better than no deal. That would not put British negotiators in a strong position, and it is an illogical statement. We know where the hardliners uh, will come down. Uh, they will come down for maximum autonomy. But they should also tell the truth about the implications of this for our future trade and our future prosperity. But to those who want to stop Brexit, and I've heard one or two speeches that seem to say they would like to, we must listen to the democratic decision of the people. I was particularly struck by Lord Adonis, who made a very good speech, but it, it seemed to me that he was ignoring the fact that we had a referendum and what the result of the referendum was. Now, I'm not going to pretend that this is easy, but leaving does mean there is no jurisdiction of the ECJ. For myself, I've always believed our courts and there's several distinguished jurists here, I see one at least, uh, should be admired, not the enemies of the people. Uh, but why do others seem to say that they would trust people, judges from other countries, which do not have the history of admiring the rule of law and, and do not have a history of uncorruptibility either, over our own judges? I do not. Leaving means not being the single market, as indeed... David Cameron downwards said during the election campaign, the referendum campaign. And, you know, most of the rest of the world isn't in the single market. I'll name two places, one big, one small, the United States and Hong Kong. And they seem to do pretty well without the single market. It is the same with the customs union. In this, I would agree with uh, my noble friend from the front bench, Baroness Annerley. Um, if we remain it, we give up our sovereign control, although I have disagreed with her on one or two other issues regarding this. Uh, the people voted to take back control. I also believe in democratic accountability. I think most people in this House would as well. So I would ask to whom is Jean-Paul Juncker democratically accountable? My Lords, there are a small minority of those who voted Remain who don't really accept the verdict of the referendum and they think somehow, like the noble Lord or Campbell of Pitkin, that we can stay in the EU. They desperately hope that everything in these negotiations will go wrong and that at the end of the day we yeah. will remain in the EU and it will all be all right and life will go on forever. Well, who wants to stay in an EU with double the level of unemployment that we've got in this country? Youth unemployment, 24%, one in four unemployed. The economic model of the EU doesn't actually work. I'm quite confident that there is a deal to be done. If we were to turn to the WTO and to leave the European Union, the first thing we would do is stop paying any money into the European budget. That remains the case. And if there's one thing absolutely clear, it is that the British public have without doubt approved of Great Britain leaving the European Union in spite of some of the uh, wishful thinking interpretations uh, that have been said today. Firstly, through the referendum, or in spite of the fear campaign, which was dishonest, the vote was clearly to leave. And secondly, the recent election, where 85% of the electorate voted for parties which included leaving the European Union in their manifestos. To say the public have not made their views known and the Salisbury Convention should therefore not apply is semantics. It's also outrageous. <coughs> Even if the Salisbury Convention was not to apply, 
given the public support for leaving the European Union, it would be quite wrong for this House to impede the progress of this matter, least of all for a former Cabinet Secretary, for the first time in history, as far as I'm aware, to publicly try to oppose the will of the people. Leaving the European Union has to mean taking back the ability to make our own laws, which means removing the supremacy of the European Court of Justice. The ultimate authority over the laws of Great Britain has to be within these shores. Soft or hard Brexit, you cannot claim to have left the European Union if the European Union the European Union remains the ultimate legal authority in Great Britain. Some claim that staying in the European Union enables one to be part of the law-making process. My Lords, one twenty-eighth of a decision-making body with the inevitable compromises and deals is not the same as making your own laws. My Government's priority is to secure the best possible deal as the country leaves the European Union. My ministers are committed to working with Parliament, the devolved administrations, business and others to build the widest possible consensus on the country's future outside the European Union. My noble friend, uh, Baroness Ainley, spoke in the opening of this debate on the context and substance of the proposed legislation as the centrepiece of the Government's extensive legislative programme to support our exit from the EU. And these issues have been discussed with clarity, eloquence and in detail, not only today uh, but on previous occasions. And I won't seek to repeat uh, all of the points that have been raised. I will summarise certain issues. First of all, the Government has made clear that we must respect the will of the British people expressed in the referendum last year. We will be leaving the European Union. We have listened to the EU and to the EU leaders, and we understand and we respect the position that the four freedoms of the single market are indivisible and that there can be no cherry-picking. And those four freedoms inclu include the free movement of people. The noble Lord, Lord Adonis, uh, referred to these uh, four uh, fundamental and indivisible freedoms as a false doctrine, but they are nothing of the sort. It is a statement of fact that the EU wishes to maintain and will maintain the indivisibility of those four freedoms in respect of capital, services, goods and people, and we do have to respect that going forward. Indeed for, us, indeed, for us to uh, leave the EU and join the e e EEA by way of EFTA uh, would do little more than someone leaving the bridge of a ship and going down to the engine room to shovel coal into the boilers, uh, and we'd be paying for the coal as well. We would lose any sense of uh, direction, any sense of control, but we will continue to contribute uh, to the matter overall. My Lords, just pausing for a moment on the uh, motion of the noble Lord, Lord Adonis, uh, I reiterate that while uh, he refers to the